Hello and welcome, my name is Trent Hoshiko, and today we are making another lighting diagram for the painting Friar Pedro Clubs El Maragato by Goya. Now I really like Goya's work, I have been a fan of Goya for like my entire life, which um, probably says something about me because a lot of his work is quite dark, um, but I think it's a very interesting subject matter that he paints usually, um, frequently spooky things, frequently very dark themes and subject matters. And part of what I really like about his artwork is how he portrays shadows. Now, this painting is no different. So we're going to get started right away. I have already imported the image and my Filmmaker Tools template. Now, if you want to get this template for yourself for free, it's available on my Patreon. I have a link down in this video's description, and that gets you this set of tools for Drawio, which is a free and open source diagramming software. And that makes you able to make your own diagrams for your own images, your own references, or storyboards you already have in place that you want to start diagramming and figuring out the logistics of actually creating the light for. I think diagramming works of art is a really useful way to learn lighting because you kind of get an eye for how the sources are um, affecting the actual objects in the image. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I think this is my first diagram that actually takes place outdoors. You can see in the image here that there is this gateway and some clothes on a line and then the dirt ground. Now, this could be in a courtyard technically, but I think that with the size of this shadow over here, it's probably not in a courtyard and we are getting direct sunlight onto our subjects. That's the first thing that I'm kind of noticing is the actual shape of that shadow. Second thing that I'm noticing is the actual face of Friar Pedro here. It doesn't have the same level of shadow on the opposite side that is behind the subject here on the ground. Now they're creating a harder shadow, but the artist has actually raised up the exposure a little bit on the face, even where the friar is probably supposed to be putting more of a shadow onto El Maragato. Um, he's not. And that is definitely some artistic manipulation of how light would fall. So we don't have to be exactly accurate here. We want to get the feeling that the sun is coming from left to right, creating the shadows, but we can use some film trickery and um, additional light sources to change this around. Now, I'm gonna do this in a couple different ways because you can do this type of you know outdoor action scene, there's a fight, you could you know do this as a master. It could be on a dolly, it could track with them as they fight backwards and fall onto the ground all in one take. Um, there's a billion different ways to do this, but you can do this outside with just the sun. This shot totally, if it was like a tracking shot left to right, you could do it with a gimbal, you could do it with a dolly, and you could do it with a sun and a bounce cart, and that's it. That's all you would need. That would be distinctly the cheapest way to set this up. But here, let's first get our scene set. Now, we want to make sure that we have the wall behind. So we're going to go down to our floor plan tools. The gate, the details of that stuff, we're not really worried about it. Um, there's going to be a background of some type. And I like how in the image, it's actually pretty loose. If you want to get a look that's kind of more like this in your camera, you would just open up your aperture and blur the background a little bit more. That's how you would get that similar kind of um, fuzzy abstraction to the background. So first we have Father Pedro, and then let's get the other guy. and. We'll just do another one of these models and we'll just turn them like this. Oh, look, he's fallen over. <laughs> so the first technique that I'm going to show you is just the cheapest way. We are going to take the sun and we're going to put it there. And then we're going to go over here and grab a light path. And basically the idea is that the sun from this direction is casting over just about everything in the scene kind of how the sun works, isn't it? From this kind of angle, pretty much in line with them. Um, not exactly necessarily uh, in line with the friar, but kind of just a slightly off angle from them so that we get the light on Margareto and the light on the friar's right side, which is camera left. Um, it does wrap ever so slightly, but really that shadow kind of tells us that direction is pretty much straight across behind him. So that shadow would be somewhere right around here. And you could basically do it with just this. Now at the same time, 
you're probably going to have this shadow be too dark and have this shadow down here be too dark and you're going to lose detail on them um, and it might not look you know quite as defined as you might want now at the same time if you really wanted this to be very harsh lighting you could leave it that way but for my taste and preference i'm going to get a bounce card and we're going to bounce that sun right back at them and basically you know if you've ever worked with a bounce of any type before you're going to be just bouncing it straight back in line with the sun maybe angling it slightly here we'll just put it right like this and the idea being that we're going to then be able to fill in both the shadow on his face and also fill in some of Margareto's shadow as well. So that way uh, we're not losing as much detail in the image. And I mean, basically you get the sun in the right position. This would take planning in terms of the time of day, location of the sun. You need to location scout and figure out where the sun was going to be on the day. But after that, all you need is a bounce. That can be really cheap to actually do this. Now let's talk about if you want to have more control over your image because that's important to you. You probably will still be able to use the sun, but you want to add in some of your own light. Now, if you add in a not super directional, somewhat soft light to this image, you could do that with something like an Octobox. And you can put that somewhat in line with them, but just over enough to kind of wrap the look of the sun around them just a little bit to make sure that we're still getting details in the face, but we don't need that source to be so incredibly hard um, and we can wrap it around. Now, this is a pretty cheap way to do it because you can get soft boxes really cheap. A different way to do it is instead you could use a lamp with a Fresnel if you wanted still some more of that angular type look to the face um, as if it was also coming from the sun you can use a lamp with a fresnel on it that could be something like a gvm p80s that could be um, an airy tungsten fresnel that has an actual fresnel built into it um, it could be a lot of different options but that would be if you're having a lens that's accentuating that now my way of kind of doing this is actually taking a little bit of both of these instead of just having either the fresnel or the octobox i'm going to say you could have both so the idea here being that we are able to just further wrap the light around just a little bit the big benefit of having the fresnel here is that yes you're using the sun's power but if the sun moves just a little bit your light's going to still be more consistent than not because you have that light with the Fresnel on here. You're still going to be getting that hard light look on the face where you were supposed to when you have to go back for another take five, ten minutes later. Depending exactly on when you're filming this, that sun could change a lot, so you probably do need to do this kind of filming quite quickly. But by having our own light sources that we are controlling, we do control the variables just a little bit so that if the sun changes in its position, even so slightly, whereas here you might be able to see it like really distinctly. Here we would have less of a change and more consistency between takes, especially if you need to do multiple takes that are going to be spliced together. We are still using the bounce to fill that in, and so that's hoping that the sun does not change in position too much, but also it could be catching some of the light from the Octobox, it could be catching some of the light from the Fresnel, depending exactly on the position, but really the balance is still mostly there for the sun. If you had a lot more money and you really wanted to make this very consistent but still have the sun, you could put a large like 6x6 or 12x12 instead of the Octobox down here to make sure that at least one side is always very consistently lit and then have a Fresnel or a you know more powerful HMI to actually create that shape in addition to the sun. That is possible, but that is distinctly a lot more money to have that kind of setup. So those are our two first options. We have the sun and a bounce, and then here we've added some artificial lighting with the Fresnel and the Octobox, and the and then the bounce is still there with the sun, but we have a little bit more control. 
Um, you could do it with just the Fresnel or just the Octobox, depending on your gear. It will just give you less control overall, especially if that sun does move. Now, the other question I want to answer, though, is what happens if this is on a stage? What if we've made a background and we have our actors on a soundstage of some type and we want to do the lighting for this. Well, now without the sun, we lose all of our light. And you'll be kicking yourself because the sun is the greatest free light that you will ever, ever get. Um, but it is, it is hard to work with, and it's not consistent. So if you need to have consistency and you're working on a stage, this is how I would set it up. So starting out here, we do want to have light coming from this side, but we'll get back to that in just a minute. We now want to replicate this look. Overall, we need to have enough light coming across to look like a shaft of sunlight that is coming across to hit them. So we're going to have our lamp with our Fresnel coming across, striking both of them just like this. That should create these shadows underneath the coat, these distinct edges, and some of that shaping to the face. The big challenge here is now we have to light this entire background. If you're on a sound stage, you might have a lighting grid. If you're on like a theatrical stage that you've rented, maybe at like at a community theater, for example, you're probably still going to have some aspect of lighting that is in the background. Um, because you're trying to replicate sunlight, you really want this to be just overall bright and consistent across as best as possible. So you could do something like have a Kino flow. You could do one or two banks of Kino flows coming from a top-down grid and having that light this entire background. That is something that could work. If you don't have Kino flows, if you don't have a grid, you could potentially get away with something like using multiple octoboxes with lamps coming from the same direction to light that entire backdrop. But the important thing is that you get it to look relatively consistent and distinctly bright. These tones back here um, are going to need to be bright enough to feel like they are outside. That's why when we're talking about this, we really want to make sure that we are getting this light to look consistent. Now, at the same time, you could get more stylized. You could have this be limited and then really a lot brighter in the front. That could be a combination of a style choice and a budget choice. There's a million ways to do any of these things, but we're talking about where the sources are and how the sources are affecting the image. Now, this Fresnel is going to be creating those little bit of harder shadows and that shadow along the ground, that's the goal. We don't want these octoboxes to be softening those shadows, so we might need to control spill depending. But now, like I said, we're gonna come back to this one. This could still be a bounce. It could be catching some of this ambient light and that Fresnel and pushing it back just like we did outside. But because we're not gonna have as much power as like the sun, I would say that this would be a good opportunity to actually just have another sheet of diffusion on this side that's just providing a really nice soft light coming back across to really raise up those shadows. Because like I said, the artist has made this a little bit less shadowy here and here than it could have been. We do see this shadow from El Margareto being so dark, and we see the underside of his cloak being so dark. Making sure that we understand how we can use artistic license to make the image that we want, that's what we're doing here. So this right here is going to come back and light them just a little bit. Now, this is a more expensive setup. If you're on a stage, you're going to need to have a little bit more money for the equipment. I'd say renting it for this number of octoboxes probably is right. Now, you're gonna not like me, but I think that also you probably would end up needing to have some sort of lantern or space light as well that is just hung right above them to just add to the ambience and the non-directionality of the light that's kind of between them. So like on the left side is directional, on the right side is directional. Between them, it's a little bit less directional in particular. So if you had a lantern that was kind of hung up somewhere around here that could just raise that exposure a little bit more, I think that that would be worth it for getting this type of look for your image. But at the same time, we are talking one, two, three, four, five, six lamps, and then some sort of four by four diffusion, a lantern, three octoboxes, and a Fresnel. 
that definitely is for a higher budget. If you are on a theatrical stage, they might actually have Source 4 Alecos that you can use to light the background. That will save you this expense over here. You might then be able to use a spotlight to use your Fresnel. Depends exactly on what the stage has, and even some sound stages that you can rent for like photography or small productions. Even some of those come with some level of, of equipment or relationships to rental houses. So there are different ways to make this affordable. And the goal always is to capture your scene as best as you possibly can with the budget that you do have. That's always the push and pull of production. And that's something that the cinematographer needs to work with both the director and the producer on to make sure that everybody is happy with how we are creating these images and getting them captured effectively without breaking the budget nor underselling the story that we're trying to tell with the light itself. Now, one thing about this is that the light between them is a little softer almost. It is a little bit less shadowed, but that doesn't mean that we're not getting a, still a lot of sculpting on the face. That is why I have chosen to make sure that we are getting that with the Fresnel. You want that accentuated nose, you want that neck. And, you know, the sun is probably pretty decently high in the sky. It's probably coming down to a 45 degree angle because of how you can see his head. But that shadow right there, that shadow is so dark that we are definitely manipulating how the shadows work just a little bit, which is why we have brought that lamp from the other side in. There's no actual source from this side, but we want to raise that up so that we can see the detail while also retaining that sculpting from the Fresnel. Now, I'd say that this is one way to do it. This is probably actually, unfortunately, the cheaper way to do this. If you want to have even more control, instead of the Octobox here, I'd say I would use a really large diffusion sheet. That could flatten things out some, so be careful. But the goal is to wrap that idea of the Fresnel light around the face without being too aggressive in brightening the image, but being sure that there's almost like a gradient between the harsher light and the shadows on the other side that are being softened ever so slightly. So this could be a six by six, easy. This could be a four by four. This could be a six by six. There's multiple options there, and it really depends on how soft you want that light. I'd say that either of these could be six by sixes. It's somewhere in between in terms of the size. You get a big source for that soft light, and that kind of subtle wrap around, but it's not so soft that it's just lifting the shadows. We don't want to interrupt the Fresnel's shaping of the face itself. So that wraps up this lighting diagram. These are four different ways to do it from varying budgets. This one down here will cost you like $35 to $75, depending on the kind of bounce you're using. This one right here will cost you a little bit more because you're using the Octobox, you're using the Fresnel and the lamps that come with it, but you're still using the power of the sun mostly. That bounce, still $30 to $75. It's a little bit cheaper. Lots of people might have these tools already in their kit to be able to use. This one starts to get more expensive, but is indoors. And this one is the most expensive one and is indoors. Um, I would say that you could even back here, if you wanted to, you could use actual diffusion frames instead of those octoboxes, depending exactly on how soft you want that light back there to look. Because actually in the reference image, despite the shadows being so hard here, the background is pretty soft. Now that's partly through the actual brush strokes because it's a painting and you can control that kind of creaminess of the, the bokeh and the depth of field with your lens. But also you can keep that light a little bit softer in the back there and have that harder light up front. And that will also create some separation to your image. But these are four different ways to light this painting. Thank you so much for watching today. If you are curious about any of the tools I've talked about in this video, you can find affiliate links to them in the video description down below. If you want to subscribe on Patreon or tip on Ko-fi, um, I have links to those down below as well. This year, I'm going to be doing a lot more lighting diagrams. So my Patreon actually has a support tier just for lighting diagrams in particular. If you want to support my videos overall, tiers on Patreon do start at only $2. And while you're on Patreon, if you want to get my template that is free so that you can start making your own lighting diagrams, 
The link is down in the video description. It's completely free. Drawio is completely free. It's an awesome open source diagram software, and I find it super useful, especially when planning the logistics of shoots. Thank you again for watching, and I hope that you have an absolutely wonderful day.